Hello cheapskaters. I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheapskates Club, where our goal is to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing. One of the ways we can reach that goal is by cutting the cost of the food we eat. And an easy way to do that is to cook from scratch. Now, I am sure you've either said or have heard that old favourite, but I can't even boil water. And for a lot of people, that is actually true. So in this series, we are going back to basics because there are a lot of people who simply don't know where to begin. And so we are going to begin with boiling water. Now, there's a couple of ways to boil water. And while this may seem childish, knowing how to do this and how to use that boiled water is actually important. The most common way to boil water, of course, is to simply take an electric jug, fill it with cold tap water and turn it on. And it boils. Most modern kettles and jugs boil very quickly and they can boil a cup of water in under a minute. Now that's really convenient, but it's also rather an expensive way to boil a cup of water. And that's because electric kettles are really quick to boil larger quantities. My kettle can hold up to 1.7 litres of water and boil it in just a couple of minutes. Now again, it's really handy, but it's also very, very expensive. In this case, the benefit of the speed is what costs. Now, let me just flip you down and we'll boil water in the kettle so that while I'm talking and you can see just how quick it is. It's um, really simple and easy. Let's see, oh, can I lift it? Yes, now my kettle at the moment is holding not quite a litre of water, three quarters of a litre of water. So that's three cups. Now I'm just going to flip you down so you can see what's going on. There it is. Turn the handle so you can see. Helps if I turn it on at the PowerPoint. And the water in there at the moment is currently 17 degrees. It's going to come up to 100 degrees. That's boiling point really, really quickly. You can probably hear it going now. 100 degrees Celsius, 212 Fahrenheit is boiling point, and when the kettle reaches boiling point, it will turn off. Now, if you pour the water into your teapot or your coffee mug as soon as it switches off, you'll have the best chance of actually making your drink with boiling water. And for things like instant sauces and gravy, a little off the boil is okay. The powders will still dissolve and the end result will still be warm. It's quite noisy, isn't it? Now, a way to have a supply of almost boiling hot water for your tea or coffee or hot chocolate without having to boil the kettle every time is to simply use the thermos. Now, let me show you our trusty thermos. I have it right here. This is our thermos. It's, oh, it's old. It was an engagement present. So it's very old. It's even a bit beaten up. We can buy, because it's a Stanley, a Latin Stanley brand, we can buy. I mean, for it if we need to but I just fill this in the mornings after we've made our morning cup up we fill it with what's left in the kettle that's enough for me for during the day to have hot water almost boiling point it's hot enough for drinking anyway okay here comes the kettle you can see it's up to 95 96 97 99, 100, boils for a few seconds and it will turn itself off. 
there we go, it's turned itself off. So now we know that it's hot enough for our cup of tea or coffee. Now I'm not going to make tea or coffee at the moment, so I am just going to pour it straight into the thermos. Didn't mean to knock the camera for you. There we go. And I will, oops, bit over full, go and empty it down. Um, empty a bit. Not oh, to put back in there. Oh, I waste it. Don't waste water. Open it this way. I just don't want it to um, come up past where the stopper goes in because it overflows. There we go. Put the stopper in. Now I've got hot water for my drinks. And later on today, I will be making a cup of tea with that hot water. That's how it works in your kettle. Now, another way to um, let me flip you back up so you're not staring at the kettle. The next fastest way to um, boil a cup of water is to fill a microwave mug, microwave safe mug, with cold water and put it into your microwave and set it on high for 45 to 60 seconds. So. I have, I have a mug here. It has some water in it. There we go. So I'm just going to trot over to the microwave, set it for 45 seconds and see how long it takes to boil. So that seems pretty easy. Now, the time it's in the microwave actually depends on the power of your microwave. Lower wattages take longer, obviously. Higher wattage, it will boil faster. But within the 45 to 60 seconds, your water in that mug should be boiling. Now, that means you need to be really, really careful when you lift it out of the microwave. I'm going to put a little caveat in here and say that um, boiling water in the microwave isn't recommended and that's because it's unreliable and it can actually cause the water to become superheated. That means that it is so hot, there we go, it doesn't look like it's actually boiling. There's usually not any or very few bubbles but as soon as you move that mug or the jug, if you're using a jug, the movement causes the water to erupt. It will explode out of the um, mug and it can cause some really nasty burns. So let me go and see if this is boiling yet. Not quite. Let's try that other 20 seconds and see how it goes. It's a bit frustrating to have to boil in the microwave because you've got to stand there and watch it and so on. It's not a terribly time efficient, energy efficient way of boiling your water, especially if it's just for a cup of tea. Still no bubbles. Let's try again. We'll do another 20 seconds and see. Lots of people like to use the microwave for boiling things. And if you are reheating a soup or a sauce, it is fantastic. Plain old boiling water for a cup of coffee? Yeah, maybe not so. If you have no other way of boiling your water, it's going to work for you. And we have bubbles. Let's see if I can get them. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. 
let me flip you down and so you can see them because you won't be able to see them in the cup here okay uh, you can't see the bubbles there's no little bubbles they didn't last long it doesn't hold boiling point very long when you do water this way but push comes to shove and you need a way to boil water that's how you can do it in the microwave can you see what i'm doing here i'm i'm sort of saying to you anyone can boil water you can learn to boil water if you can learn to boil water you can learn to cook from scratch that's what i'm sort of sneakily saying now my last method for boiling water is really back to basics it's in a pot or a kettle on the stove now, if you're only boiling water um, for a cuppa, yeah, let me put it down here so you can see I've already put some water in my little milk pot. This is the smallest saucepan I have that has a lid. Um, if you're only going to boil a cup of two of water, small saucepan. If you are boiling water for vegetables, to rehydrate vegetables, you need to use a pot big enough to hold the veggies and they need to be covered by about three centimetres of water. Now that works too. Let's just get this pot on. That works too if you are boiling water, uh, boiling going up so you can see the pots on the stove. Turn it on. Turn the heat down. There we go. Um, that works too for potatoes, pumpkin, broccoli, whatever, if you want to boil it or steam it. So steaming, you put water in the bottom of your pot, put your steamer basket in, put your veggies in. Slightly different method, but you still need boiling water. Now, cover your lid, cover your pot. A covered pot boils faster. It's true, it really does. There's a whole lot of other um, sort of, uh, what, what do we call them? There's a whole lot of other old wives tales out there about boiling water and how to do it and how long it takes. Things like, you know, start with hot water, it boils faster. <laughs> Not necessarily. Um, you know, lid on, lid off, big pot, shallow water, boils faster than a small pot with deeper water, a whole lot of things. But the one thing that is consistent throughout all those old wives' tales that is actually true is put the lid on. It will boil faster with the lid on. Now, when you're boiling a pot of water on the stove, don't wander off. It could boil dry. You want to know how I know? It could boil dry. And if it does, you'll run the risk of ruining your pot and possibly your cook top, depending on what it is. So let's see. I've got this turned right up. The gas turned up right up. Oh, it's starting to form bubbles. How cute. I'm not sure how much long a cup of water takes to boil on the stove. It takes a while. Just like it takes about 20 minutes for a big pot of cold water with veggies to come to the boil and I'll talk about boiling veggies and steaming veggies in another back to basics video because there's pros and cons to both methods of cooking and there's the right way the wrong way the cath way that works and a few other things that makes cooking veggies um, to get the best out of them easy so there's condensation forming on the lid let's see maybe i can bring you down so you can see that that would be really interesting if you could see that condensation and we have bubbles we have bubbles okay very important You want um, for boiling, for boiling anything other than a hot drink, you want 
what we call a rolling boil. Now, I'm going to, how can I do this so you can see without spilling it everywhere? Some people often ask, because I talk about a rolling boil quite often, people will say, what is a rolling boil? A rolling boil, my chips getting friends, is, can you hear that noise? Ah, oh, didn't quite get the, ooh, good steam up the camera. Can't quite get it. I might try and move the camera down so that it's back to the boil so that you can actually ouch, see. Bear with me as I do this because I do not want to cause a major, oops, going back and coming around. Gone too far. Can you see? If I put you down too far, the steam's going to fog up the lens. See that? That's a rolling boil for everybody who was asking me about that or who has asked me about that in the past. That's a rolling boil. Okay, let me get, get back to you so you can see and we'll turn that off because we don't need it. I will put it in the furnace. Okay. Now you know how to boil water. So no more excuses for not cooking. No more saying, oh, I can't even boil water. Because you can, and you've got three methods of doing it. As this series progresses, I was sharing basic recipes for basic meals and showing you how I make them to feed my very hungry family without going over our grocery budget. But they won't be boring, even if they are basic. We like our food to have flavour. We like it to have texture and we like it to be appetising and appealing. And if a recipe can be easily doubled, all well, those double up recipes, they just make my heart sing. Because who doesn't want to save time and money and energy getting dinner on the table? To be able to do that, you will need some basic pantry items. And I will be sharing the ingredients that are always in my pantry. Now, Cheapskates Club members will be able to log in in September and see an actual pantry tour that I'm doing. It's the first one I have done in many, many years and I won't be doing another one for probably many, many more years. It will be in the Member Centre in September. I'll be sharing the ingredients that are always in my pantry because ingredients give you options. And I'll be sharing some of those options with you as you stock your pantry with basic ingredients. We're all conscious of the need to stretch our grocery dollars at the moment. This will help you. You'll also be learning to use your kitchen appliances to their full advantage. We may be going back to basics, but we're not going to waste the tools that we have at our disposal. You know, I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I'm a homemaker. I feed my family on a tight budget. I have some basic recipes and some basic skills that I adapt often to make our meals better and cheaper. So I hope this series of little back to basics how to's is going to help you and encourage you and inspire you as you live the cheapskates way. I would be thrilled if you could leave a comment in the section below. I read all my comments and if you've got a question, put it in the section below me there and I do my best to um, answer all your questions. Hope you've enjoyed this first episode of Back to Basics, The Cheapskates Way. There are more to come, so stay tuned. They will usually post on a Sunday, Sunday afternoon so that they're fairly regular for you because this week, you're going to practice how to boil water. Until next week, enjoy boiling your water and I'll see you soon with another Back to Basics, the Cheapskates Way video.